Hello, my friends. It's Krebsy here. I'm gonna be playing a little bit of War Thunder. I get a little uh, a question uh, quite often, and this and this particular question actually, uh, you know, you know, apart from uh, are you male or female, Krebs? <laughs> uh, I get this one quite often, and it's usually a lot of times. Uh, sometimes in my comments, in my videos, but sometimes also when, or mostly, usually when I'm playing with you guys, the fans, and 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 the squadron, or in the squad, more like. Um, I get this one quite often, because a lot of times people are competitive and they always want to try to get the highest amount of kills in the game, and it's totally understandable because that's how you get a lot of XP and credits and how to level fastest, okay? Uh, so it's totally understandable. A lot of times people ask me, Krebs, how do you manage to get so many kills and how do you get so high in, in, in every single game? How do you place near enough first place in every single game? Um, well, first off, I should point out that that, that that is arcade battles, okay? Historical battles, I think, is is kind of harder. I'm, I'm getting a lot better than I used to be, uh, and it's really been picking up historical battles in, in recent days. 195 missions, 205 air, air targets destroyed, and I've finally broken that one-to-one -one barrier! I, I, was, I was really wanting to make a video on me destroying that one-to-one -one barrier, but uh, I passed it too fast in, in one game. I think in one game I got five kills, and I was like, oh, damn it! <laughs> I got too much. Uh, I can't make a video anymore. Uh, so I passed the one-to-one -one barrier on HB, but uh, as you can probably see in, in arcade battles, I'm starting to near about an average of eight kills per finished mission, okay? Um, and, and that's uh, and that's why I tend to get a lot of questions, like, how, how do you do so well? Like, I, I just don't understand. I go on so many missions, uh, I'm just not getting nearly as many kills, I don't have the aim, how are you pulling off these tight maneuvers? And I, I feel like, uh, you know, I should come out with some sort of, you know, really crazy secret, like, oh man, you guys are forgetting about that win button. Uh, on your keyboard, all you have to do is press Alt plus F4. You know that that does wonders. Nobody ever wanted to do it, but you never knew. <laughs> you never knew that it actually gave you superpowers. No, honestly, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's I, I don't have I don't have a secret, so to say. I think it's a, a combination of different things. Um, and and I was thinking for this episode, what I think would be really good for you guys and, and really cool to show is if I do literally nothing but speak about everything that is going through my mind during an arcade battle. Okay, we're not doing historical battle because I, I don't think I'm at the stage of like being an expert, you know, like some of you guys are telling me what IAS to go at and like what angle of approach and I'm just like, what? I, I, <laughs> you know, it's a bit crazy sometimes. Uh, so I think we'll stay at arcade battles for this episode. Maybe we'll do historical battles in the future. Um, tips, tips, tips. But uh, right now we'll do arcade battles. Now I'll explain literally everything that is going through my head um, when it comes to how I'm flying, what I'm thinking of how to approach the enemy, how I want to attack the enemy. Just, just literally everything. Uh, and, and I hope. I hope you guys will find it informative, okay? And we're gonna be doing this live, all right? So I was thinking that what we could do is probably two games and at varying tiers, because no doubt there's gonna be people who are playing lower tiers and people who are playing higher tiers. When it comes to what I think the faction is the best in, in terms of right on through, I mean, USSR without a doubt, but you know, for the sake of not going for USSR, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, USSR, too good, Chaika, too much damage, Yak-19, too much damage, you know, and, and fair dues, fair dues, because they do do a lot of damage, so I think for that reason alone, we're gonna stay away from the USSR this episode. Uh, the other <laughs> faction that I think you could really, really use effectively from square one, okay, so from level zero up until the high levels that, well, at least level 14 from what I've noticed thus far since I'm level 14, is the Brits, okay? Uh, the fighters like none other, all right? Spitfire is remarkable planes, Hispanos, powerful attackers, like the Bowfighter has such an amazing name in this game because it's just such a great plane. Uh, in terms of damage output, okay, it's a bit of a slug when it you know, comes to turning and blah blah blah, but it's a B and Z, okay, boom and zoom. Uh, hurricanes, all right. Typhoons, probably the worst of all of them, in my opinion. Just if you're if you're into the style of turn fighting, not your sort of plane. Uh, historical battles, you definitely want to be using these as boom and zoomers. Not not turn fighters. Boomerangs, great. D520, great. Just all around like really good planes for the for the British. So I was thinking we could start off some low tiers, and I mean by low tiers we're gonna go out in just like you know tier four and on and upwards, I guess. 
maybe even tier two. I'll, I'll just load up a bunch of planes here. So uh, when choosing when choosing planes, I think if we're going to explain absolutely everything that I'm doing, when choosing planes, you want to load out as many fighters as you possibly can into your roster. I've got nine slots, and honestly, to be honest, uh, nine slots is not needed, okay? Uh, people a lot of times say, you know, Krebsy, why the hell do you have so many slots? And, okay, here we go. Why do you have so many slots? It's, it's, you don't need nine planes, and you know what? If I could have just turned back time and changed that, I would definitely do that because... Uh, nine slots is too much. How many times have I used nine slots in, say, my, I don't know, 600 and what is that? How many games have I played? 736 games? Maybe five times. Maybe five times I've used nine slots in the game, you know, when it gets really desperate. But what, what, usually when it comes to nine slots, it's your team getting slaughtered and it's like, oh, well, I don't really want to stay in this match if I'm going to be getting slaughtered all the time. Uh, so I feel like leaving, and that's actually what I tend to do nowadays. If my team is getting absolutely destroyed and everyone ends up leaving, then I'll just end up leaving myself. Uh, where is this bullfighter go on to? Bullfighter goes on the mosquito. No, come back, bullfighter. You go on the mosquito. Good. And we also need to replace this Mustang here. So as you can tell, what the hell? Oh. I didn't load out the bullfighter properly. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you can tell, I've got a nice big spread of my planes. Oh, shit. You need to change as well. Ooh, go back, go back, go back, go back. Right on over to... Oh, we'll go with the Havoc. I'm, I'm not fond of the Havoc, to be honest, but whatever. Uh, as you can tell, i got a big old ass spread of uh, planes, okay? It, it, when What I do is make sure that my planes are... I have different tiers on different slots, um, and that way I can work my way up into different tiers. So say I'm doing tier 2 to tier 6 right now, and say if I wanted to mix it up and I wanted to do tier 4 to tier 8, I could just switch out these tier 2s for like something like a tier 8 or something around there. A tier 7, there you go. And then by the time I switched out all my planes, I would just have nothing but tier four and eight you have to do a little bit of thinking behind it it's not too hard to be honest but you just what you do is you replace your lowest tier plane with your highest tier one and uh, eventually what you'll have is just this nice spread of planes okay so nothing too difficult uh crew skills i'll show you what i got um i actually bought accelerated training i've only bought one lot of the 17,500 for 1000 golden eagles which is pretty damn cheap for each of my crews uh, and what this gives me, and oh my god, I've got a little bit of text. What this gives me is, uh, I've gone for this. I've gone for keen vis vision, and if I could, this was a long time ago when I first got into this game. If I could, I would change up some stuff. I got keen vision and visibility to the full. Uh, G tolerance and stamina halfway. I wish those were up all the way. Vitality all the way up, which is important. Ground service, uh, repairs, blah, 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 blah. Reload speed, very important. Healing speed, uh... I, I don't think there's a point of healing speed unless you're an attacker or a bomber with uh, gunners in the back. I, I just don't see that being important. So so that's why, for example, if I could change anything, I would. You know, like because I a lot of these a lot of times I don't use bombers. And for example, when I first got into this game, I was like fire accuracy and fire precision. Oh, that must affect how my my pilot in my fighter plane is how how accurate he is. And so I just completely ranked those up, and that, lo and behold, I found out that it only affects uh, your turret gunners. And so I was like, ugh, devastated, in a way, uh, to know that I spent my points wrongly. But, uh, oh well, I, gives, <laughs> I guess it gives me a little bit of fun of actually just leveling up stuff. So that is what I've got for my crews, and that's near enough the same for absolutely everything. I've got a few people messaging me, but I'll have to ignore you guys for now, I'm sorry. Uh, what we're going to do now is jump on into some arcade battles. Um, ooh, even before that, I should show you uh, what I've got loaded out on my shell racks. I've got stealth ammo on every single uh, plane. And the reason why I do that is, you know, people can say varying things. People can say like, oh, you know, the Omnipurpose has, uh, I don't know, HE rounds and that destroys stuff. Uh, you know, blows it up. And it has AP rounds. You know, the way that I like to think about it is I just go for stealth ammo. Because, simply put, there are no tracer rounds in there, okay? Uh, tracer rounds will change how much damage you do. It reduces the effectiveness of your rounds that has a tracer on it. It doesn't do as much damage, okay? So in terms of literally how much damage you want to do, stealth ammo is the best. 
And it, to be to be fair, there is no point of using tracers in arcade battle when you have the like marker showing you. It's like it's almost like an aimbot in a way, just showing you where you should shoot. Um, there's there's really no point of tracer rounds in, in arcade battle. Historical battle, full real, I guess I could get it. But even at that point, if you've played a lot of arcade battle, you should know where to aim. Uh, first plane that I'm going to go out with is going to be one of my higher tier ones. So what I'm going to do is go out with my bullfighter first. I, uh, To be honest, I actually stay away from my bullfighters now because it, d it doesn't really fit my playstyle that, that whole well. I mean, it's great in terms of damage output. I mean, there's nothing... I mean, look at those. You know, Hispanos are great. Um, but but the bullfighter is it's a big plane. And it's a little bit sluggish in turn fighting, and it doesn't really fit my playstyle because I love turn fighting. Uh, so I tend to actually avoid it nowadays, and if I am using the bullfighter, it's usually for bomber hunting. So I go ahead and press tab, and I take a look at the enemy roster. I always do this at the beginning of a round. I just want to see generally what they are. Uh, you know, at this point in the game, I'm so familiar with what planes to expect depending on what tier I go into. I don't really look at individual planes like, oh, there's gonna th there's a BF-109 on their team. Okay, I have to be a bit careful of that. I don't really come to that stage anymore. What I more so do is I just look at the spread. Are there more fighters? Are there more attackers? And all I'm doing now is just owning this guy. Yes, I am turn fighting. Leave me alone. Hear me roar. <laughs> I'm surprised he's actually not dead. I pretty pulled him pretty bad there. Um, and so I just look at the even spread of, uh, you know, fighters to bombers to blah 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 blah. Okay? Uh, usually I wouldn't, I shouldn't be turn fighting like this, but considering that the enemy is probably not around me right now, that's why I'm heading down. Uh, I've got my throttle just on 100%. Usually I would actually lower it. Now I'm gonna pull off this BF-109 because he's too big of a tar- uh, too small of a target. They're gonna go for this Blenheim. Um, because, ooh, I got the BF-109, because he's a bigger target, he's a bomber, and considering that I'm an attacker with these heavy-ass guns, I'm going to be good at taking him on. So I turned, turned on my uh, combat flaps, did a sharp turn, and now I'm leading the shots a little bit in front of him, my teammate gets the kill, and so I'm going to reload. There's a BF-110 just below me, but hopefully by the time I've actually reloaded, oh, he's trying to come for me, what the hell? <laughs> Uh, I've got my combat flaps on, and all I'm gonna do is actually turn fight the BF-110, which is probably the weirdest thing ever. Two attackers going at each other, this is weird. Uh, I'm gonna flip on to my side, fall down, combat flaps are up by pressing F, and I see a, an IL-2 down here, which will be an easy target, so I'm doing a little bit of a twirl, I'm gonna lead the target, pull back my throttle a little bit, start turning, do the shot, and he's gone. There we go. So I know there's a lot of things going on, so I've just recovered from my attack and all I see is this BF-110 who's still trying to kill me here. So all I'm gonna do is probably just go up like this. I'm hoping that because he's a, a an attacker, he won't have that much speed being able to vertically climb and so he'll be stalling pretty soon, letting my Yak-1B be able to kill him uh, because he's lost so much speed, he was almost suspended in air there. Now there's a Spitfire behind me. Uh, and that could become really, really deadly and very, very fast. And I think I'm going to be put on defensive quite soon over here. But I see that what he's doing is actually not going for me. He's actually turning around. And that means I could actually go for him. There's a BF-109 behind me as well. So I'm turning my combat flaps on to make my turns sharper. There's uh, uh, the Spitfire is pulled away. Bullfighter right there. Spitfire is coming back. And so I'm going to shoot at him. Criticals. Doesn't tell me what the critical is. But uh, the thing about the Spitfire is that he's got a turn fighting advantage over me. So I'm hoping my attack, my back gunner at this point can, can kill him. But looking at the weird angle that I'm at at the moment, it doesn't really seem that likely. Now again, he's suspended in air uh, because he's trying to climb up to attack me. And so the Yak-1B on my team is coming for him. This is allowing me to come for the Spitfire now. As the shot gets lined up here, I'm firing at him and he's gone. That is how you take on the Spitfire and a Bowfighter. If you can try to climb, you've got these very powerful engines on your Bowfighter that allow you to get a lot of uh, power in terms of climbing. Uh, so sometimes you can actually out, out climb people, force them into a stall. So rather than going for this bullfighter which is approaching at a head-on angle because he could easily turn up at me, I'm going to come in from the side and this is going to allow me to easier come uh, behind his six 
rather than going on a straight on angle and having to do an underside loop or a un uh, an upside down split S or whatever it's called. Okay, so I've got the shot all lined up. You can see the flaming wreck everywhere. My teammate has crashed into me, which is a bit unfortunate, but the thing is you have to realize um, that <laughs> these things will happen uh, because, you know, two people are pursuing one enemy. These things will happen. So now that bullfighter, the bullfighter is gone, I'm going to go out into my Spitfire. Okay? Somebody has recognized me. USS Mies. I'm going to go out into my Spitfire. All right? What? I got the friendly fire? Dude, he crashed into me. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I was, I was flying behind that guy and he swerved right into me. Okay, whatever. Just, just move on. Um, so I've got my Spitfire now. Uh, it flies completely different from the Bullfighter. Uh, it's very powerful as well though. It has these Hispano cannons on it as well. So, what I see in front of me is that there's a lot of teammates over on the left hand side. And just a few targets over there. Ground targets, if you look up at the top, it, the enemy team is losing. Um, in comparison to to us, we have more kills than they do. Both fighters heading on in this direction, so all I'm gonna do is throw on my combat flaps, or sorry, my landing flaps, lead that target. Because he was underneath me, it allowed me to get a very, very nice clean shot in his canopy. And now I'm gonna be engaging the fight here. Combat fl our landing flaps are down. Hurricane is the nearest target to me. Uh, and this changes very, very frequently, by the way. So, hold on, we're gonna keep on going for him. Usually what happens is you don't want to lose sight. Oop, there's somebody behind me, so what I'm gonna have to do is let him overtake me. And all I'm doing is these vertical climbs and twisting on up, because a lot of times players will just... What they'll do is, rather than follow you, um, they might actually just go do a normal turn, in a way. And that could be... It can put them off when you do something completely different. So a lot of times I like doing that sort of corkscrew, uh, corkscrew, and then uh, go climbing vertically. Okay. So BF109 here. I'm being shot from the side. I have to pull off this guy. It's Spitfire Mark One. So we've got a little bit of an even fight here. Got totally wrecked. Got totally wrecked by another Spitfire. Unfortunately, that's what happens. Let's see if I can get one last kill. Lead the shot a little bit. It's looking kind of unlikely right now. Looking how low the profile is. It's looking kind of unlikely. Oh man. Just letting it go all of my shots before we have to jump out here. Ah, oh, no, that's it. I have to jump out. Got a few kill assists though. Uh, four kills at the moment. Ground targets, they have six, we have 17. Spitfire Mark II killed me. So usually what happens when an, en an enemy kills me, I'm going to go out into actually my D520 right now. It doesn't have a lot of cannon ammo. Usually a lot of times when an enemy kills me, and especially if it's a plane that I feel are one of the stronger ones in the game. So for example, Spitfire, or uh, and, and this tier, Spitfire, uh, Yak-9T, um, certain Japanese planes like Zeros. Usually if, if I, one of them ends up killing me, what I'll do is I'll go into the tab, I'll look at the leaderboards and see what their score is. Because if they are somebody who's leading, as in they have a lot of points, a lot of kills, then I'll usually single out that target and go kill them. It's basically saying that they're their best player, go kill them. Um, sometimes what will happen is that people... It, they they won't necessarily be a good a good player, but they'll be using their favorite plane or a plane that is deadly. Okay, so say for example somebody who gets a lot of kills in a Yak 9T uh, doesn't necessarily mean they're a good player. It just means that they're using a plane that is a little bit funky to say the least. Um, and so I will usually single out those targets, go for them. So finishing off that uh, IL what was that IL two, I imagine. Uh, now I'm turned down onto this bullfighter over here. You gotta be a little bit wary of his... Wow, he's dead. That was, that was really quick. Much quicker than I anticipated. Uh, killing... Yeah. Only thing I had to be really careful of was his back gunner. Uh, last thing you want to do is get hit by his back gunner. I'm doing a corkscrew here to let this uh, hurricane overshoot. I have my combat flaps up and I'm behind him. And all I'm doing is leading the target, engaging. Now there's a Donier behind me and also a Bullfighter. I'm gonna go for the Bullfighter because the Bullfighter can be quite a, a deadly target to the team as well if left uh, untuned. As you can see, 
right there. Uh, but he's flying away now, so I'm gonna pull off of him and go on to another bullfighter. The cannons are the most important part that do the damage here. Okay, right. Now we have another Spitfire. This is the guy who killed me. So now we're gonna unleash our revenge on him and leave these shots a little bit in front, a little bit in front. Okay, now we're gonna start going straight on at him because all we see is just his backside, his rear end, his tail. And now his fuselage is very, very, very damaged. Uh, he's going down. And so both fighters right in front of us, perfect target to be lined up. And all we're gonna do is keep on firing at him. He's not set on fire, which is great. Lots of points coming in, as you can see. All that burning damage. Look at all that XP come up. These heavier planes do uh, give you more uh, points for every shot that you get. So I'm looking around me just to be aware of what is around me. Uh, Bullfighter's almost gone. I really, really want to finish him rather than let him go all the way back to base. He can take a lot of shots. I'm destroying his gear legs and everything here. And usually when th what happens now is you don't want to chase your target back all the way to the base, but I'm getting a lot of points here, which is great. Hello. I guess we'll finish off this guy. Just because he's right here. Wow. Uh, these targets can be sometimes hard to kill, and there's a guy right behind me. You can see those shots coming, but I really wanted to kill these targets. So much that it almost became like, uh... Uh... So much that it almost became like, I don't know, tunnel vision. So, if there's something that you can learn from that, you don't want to get tunnel vision. But, I mean, it was, it was almost an end of the game, so I think there was a bit of leeway. You know, get a lot of points. Holy shit. Oh my god, I've never gotten that big of a trophy before. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Krebs. You got 150,000 on, on, on the video. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah. Woo. Uh, cool. <laughs> uh, this this method does not uh, trust me. This method does not earn you those all the time. Uh, all right, so that was some lower tiers for you. Uh, what we'll do now is go out into I guess a little bit higher tiers. You know, tierish and elevenish uh, with the Germans. We'll try that out. Give them a go. Okay, so how do the Germans vary from the Brits? Well, the Germans in general, you could say that they're more of uh, boom and zoomers rather than turn fighters like the Brits, uh, depending on which planes you're talking about, okay? Uh, Spitfires, for example, turn fighters, BF-109s, uh, boom and zoomers, but because it's arcade battle, it sort of makes the area more of a gray area between all the planes in the entire game. So basically, you could use a plane that's uh, normally restricted to a certain role in a different capacity that would normally not be realistically able to do. So, for example, I'll be able to turn fight quite well in my BF-109s if I'm pulling off my maneuvers quite well. Uh, for example, one of those ver that vertical that vertical thingamajig the corkscrew that I was doing that was uh, that that can throw people off. Just doing the video, man. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing right now <laughs> that's my flatmate. What I'm gonna be doing right now is. Uh, Landing on our airfield, so landing the Krebs way is landing on the airfield at a really fast pace. Uh, I can't actually see the airfield too well, and what I'm going to do is just put my landing flaps, turn my thrall down. Uh, you don't want to go over 500, else that can really screw you up. So what I'm going to do is just touch down, touch down, touch down, there we go. And there we are. So basically the way to approach that is you put down your landing gear, you touch down to the ground, um, not too fast, okay, because if you go slamming to the ground, you obviously know what's gonna happen. Uh, and you could be at 400, you know, 450, but anywhere over that, it's gonna be too much. You see how I was rattling like mad against the ground. Um, you know, 450 is plenty. And you can't do that with every single plane out there. Japanese Zeros, for example, just have too much ground effect. It just prevents you from landing on the airfield when your airspeed is too high. Okay, so after pulling back up, uh, I'm looking at the enemy roster. They've got a lot of planes here in terms of uh, fighters and attackers. Um, not attackers, sorry, but heavy fighters. And so, you know, heavy fighters I'm not worried about. The smaller ones I'm more worried about. So if I had to single out anything, it'd be like this a zero, and that's pretty much it. The only thing I'm really worried about is that zero. Uh, that's about it. So, this map is a little bit funky. 
uh, Mozdok because I think it really does not promote uh, people attacking each other. I mean, technically speaking, both teams could just stay over their airfields and just, you know, everyone's having a happy day. And that's exactly what the teams are doing at the moment. Nobody wants to really uh, spar on out because uh, if I go out there, I'm going to get killed. Um, the odds are against me. Uh, if they come over here, they're going to get killed. So I'm just going to gain altitude because if I gain altitude, and it doesn't even have to be high, you know, two kilometers uh, seems quite high in arcade battle, and, and, and it is because a lot of times people, when they're down below, uh, majority of the players are near the ground. They can't be bothered going up into the sky to chase after, you know, one target. Um, so they usually leave him alone. But by being at high altitude, people are usually going to leave you alone. And that's and this gives me an advantage. Now I can just dive on whoever I see uh, coming a bit too far out. So the A6M2. I'm going to put on my combat flaps. And I'm just going to engage him critical. And I set him on fire. I'm not sure if I'll get that. All I'm going to do now is a lagging maneuver. And there we go, we got it. Just like a vulture from the sky, isn't it? Gonna reload, because uh, nobody is near me, so I'm not gonna get another kill or have to engage a battle anytime soon. Uh, so I'm just reloading to make sure I have as much ammo capacity as possible in my plane. There's a Mosquito who is now outstretching, and now I'm gonna go for him. All the rest of their planes are far away apart from that Fokker Wolf, which is now approaching us as well. So he's starting to look like a closer target than this Mosquito. Uh, but could rapidly change. See, he's flying away now. The mosquito's a closer target. And so he's on fire. <sighs> I'm going to teach good etiquette. I'm not going to kill steal it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is now go for the BF-109G. And he's instantly dead. Leading that target. One of the best ways that you can kill someone is actually from the side. Okay? Uh, it exposes their <clears throat> a very large surface area to them. A uh, good potential to hit them in their pilot, their cockpit. Um, and it's great. Okay, Mosquito down here. I don't know if this is the same one, but, you know, he's still not dead, so whatever. I'm, I'm unleashing into him. Oh my gosh, he's unleashing bombs. And now I'm going to fly away from the battle. After doing a bit of damage, I'm flying away. Going to be reloading. Uh, because hopefully there won't be any enemies near me. But you have to be very wary. You have to press C to look down. Uh, just to be sure that there's no nothing flying around you. F Fokker Wolf just over here. I'm going to turn around using my combat flaps. And just using Q and I should have told you guys this earlier, but when I'm turning I use my rudder and also my turn uh, to do my sharp turns. So I use Q. Uh, oh, hold on, I've got somebody behind me, I need to focus on this. Okay, so right now I'm using S. Okay, whatever, bullfighter killed me. I was using S and E to turn to the right and gain altitude at the same time. I didn't think he was going to be coming for me, that bullfighter, but whatever. Uh, that's what happens. Uh, next plane I'm going to go out with is my BF-109 G2. I'm just working from high to low. That's just the tendency that I do. Uh, usually the higher tier planes get more income than the lower tier ones. So that's just what I do. Uh, okay, so Fokker Wolf, Typhoon, and I don't think there's BF-109 over there anymore. Or sorry, uh, a bullfighter there anymore. So all I'm doing is gaining some altitude. I see snapshots just... To starting to close in me because he's ch chasing after Peshka. Peshka went down. So Fokker Wolf's over here. Just in front. And I'm going to be trying to engage him. I'm going to keep my altitude because he's flying away. I don't want to lose my altitude. He's flying away. I'm just going to keep my altitude. And if he does end up turning, then I'll still have that altitude advantage over him rather than being near his level. And I see that there's a BF-109 just above me here. So this looks like it might be potential for me to be going after him. So I see that he's heading down, and he's going to be engaging my f comrade over here. And now I, I know there's a Spitfire just above, and now I'm going to go for a Spitfire because chances are he might go for me. And yeah, it looks like he's going to try it. So now I'm using S and Q to use my rudder and also gain a little bit of altitude. <sighs> Could have engaged him. This is going to be very hard to uh, come to exactly how I'm turning here because there is a lot that's going to be happening. Um, I'm doing some turning maneuvers because there are so much planes right now. Uh, what I'm trying to do is just suss out the situation, get some good targets on people, destroy this elevator so I'm going to let him be. I'm going to let him be right now. Uh, and all I'm going to do now is just keep on falling down, doing a bit of corkscrews to confuse my opponent. And he's a Spitfire. Normally, he should be having a uh, 
uh, a turn a turn advantage against me, and uh, that's definitely the case. So rather than continuing that circle, which he'd probably end up winning, I'm gonna do a loop de loop here. <laughs> Not loop de loop, and I'm gonna try to get above my hope. So again, using my rudder. Ah, almost had that shot lined up. I'm gonna pull back on my throttle here. Ah. But somebody else is engaging me, and this is really screwing up my controls. In fact, my controls are completely screwed up. I can't, I can't fight normally now. That's it. And that's 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 just what happens. To be honest, you can't you can't anticipate things like that perfectly. Um, you know, if you're focusing on someone, even even as no matter how good you are, sometimes it's going to be too hard. So, for example, my control schemes are totally duffed at the moment. I can't aim down this guy properly. Uh, I'm going to try to, you know. I, I'd be surprised if I even managed to kill this guy. I think I destroyed his engine, to be fair. He's smoking so bad. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump out. No point in wasting any more time. Uh, I'm not even sure who got me. Uh, that Spitfire was the guy I was chasing. I almost had him. If I didn't get shot while I was still going for him, I uh, would have ended up getting it. I'm gonna go out with my LA5 FN now. Another high tier. Now, uh, this thing is very UFO-like. Uh, it's very strange plane. I think it's actually so maneuverable, so UFO-like, that it actually makes it hard to pl uh, fly. That's what I've noticed thus far. Um, it, it makes it very strange. It's a weird feeling, okay? You know, for example, you could say, like, the the, the zeros are, are UFO-like because of how easy they turn, but you know how they turn. You know how much... If you if you end up turning with it, you know exactly where you're going to end up being. But this thing, it's kind of it's kind of strange. Maybe I'm just not used to it. So I'm five kills at the moment, uh, their team has four and four as their highest. I'm not the leading person at the moment because I don't have the most points. Our team is down a few people, so is theirs, but our team is down more than theirs. Um, so obviously they're going to have uh, an air advantage over us, more numbers of people. And th that makes a big difference. For example, like that one engagement that I was doing there uh, with that Spitfire, just having that one person, that one extra person, wow he's going down. Okay, that's a kill assist. Uh, I'm having high G's at the moment. And I can't see anything right now. Okay, I've got a, a, an A6M3. So all I'm going to do is hopefully just keep on climbing. Oh, God. Okay. No, I can't. I can't keep on climbing because there's a King Cobra that's at a shallow angle to me. Meaning he probably has an advantage. Uh, when it comes to uh, keeping up with me when I'm suspending the air. And all I'm going to do is do these corkscrew maneuvers to uh, displace my, my my movement and get him to overshoot me and that's exactly what I did there and now I'm just leading the shot I don't think I even have my combat flaps down right now because this plane is so UFO like it just it honestly doesn't even matter <laughs> okay so that's near enough the entire enemy team gone from this location I still got plenty of uh, ammo and all I'm going to do is pull off this, because I don't want to get into an engagement for too long. I'm doing some corkscrews to confuse my enemy. Um, and i Oh, shit. I'm not sure if I ran out of ammo or if I accidentally started reloading. I have a feeling I might have accidentally started reloading. But, uh... Okay, three seconds, two, one. And we're just about there. I think there's some enemies behind me, but they must be some distance away. Yeah. They're, they're not exactly behind me. Oh, shit. Be careful about all your surroundings. <laughs> okay, right, Spitfire right over here. I think he's trying to come for me, but his turning looks like it's a bit screwed up. Especially his engine, uh, because he's spewing a black smoke right now. And there we go, we got that final last kill. Can we get that last one? No, we can't. Whatever. <laughs> can't get them all. <clears throat> and I think at the end we got like seven kills or something like that. Uh, yeah, we got seven kills, okay? So I didn't come at the top of the leaderboard. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get more kills this round. I find that the higher tier matches, you don't get as many kills. It can be a bit more difficult. But uh, they ended up getting more uh, points, these guys. They got m more ground target kills, and chances are maybe... It's probably actually down to the ground targets. They got ground target kills, and that's how they ended up getting more. Uh, this guy got more points, he got some ground targets, same kills as me, but it just goes to show you, like, <clears throat> that's basically, yeah, that's how I play, guys. Um, and I hope you found it informative. I, 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 <laughs> that is the two games that were 
doing for today. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. If you if you did and you want me to do stuff like this again, then please let me know. If you want me to do something else, then please let me know. Just <laughs> whatever you want me to do, guys. Just give me a little bit of feedback. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And until the next episode, this is Krebsy Poo, and I will catch you all later. Thank you.